My name is Ryan Walsh. I'm an assistant professor of emergency medicine at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and I will be discussing monocular vision loss today. When it comes to evaluating a patient with a chief complaint of monocular vision loss, a general approach when it comes to obtaining their history of present illness is to focus on the following. Timing. Was it acute versus subacute? Was it painful or painless? What was the quality of vision loss? Was it just a portion of their field of vision or was it the entire field of vision? Were there any associated symptoms such as neurosymptoms, flashes or floaters, vomiting, headache? Was there any trauma? It is also important to obtain their past medical history with a focus on their past eye history. Get a good vascular history. Do they have diabetes, hypertension? Are they at contact lens wear? Have they had previous eye surgery or any previous eye diseases that have been diagnosed? And are they taking any medications? Before moving to the causes of monocular vision loss, I wanted to go over this image. This image is of the anatomy of the eye and shows how light passes through the eye. I highlight it here as it shows the many areas that could be the source of vision loss. As you can see, going from anterior to posterior, light must pass through the cornea and the anterior chamber. It then must pass through the iris and pupil and then is focused through the lens onto the retina. Prior to making it to the retina, however, it must go through the posterior chamber of vitreous humor. Then once hitting the retina, it must be able to transmit through the optic nerve. Each one of these places introduces a potential spot for the process to go wrong, resulting in vision loss. A way to remember all the potential causes of monocular vision loss is the mnemonic GO-KART MTV. As you can see here, this stands for glaucoma, optic neuritis, central retinal artery occlusion, central retinal vein occlusion, amaurosis sphugax, retinal detachment, temporal arteritis, migraine, trauma, and vitreous hemorrhage. Of this list, the five that are highlighted here in yellow are the painful causes of vision loss, while those remaining in white are painless causes. So let's go into some cases. Case one is a 60 year old male presenting with acute painful right eye vision loss. He also has a headache and has been vomiting. This started 30 minutes into watching a movie at a movie theater. On exam, he has scleral injection, the cornea is cloudy, and the intraocular pressure is 60 millimeters of mercury. So we go to our list highlighting the painful causes of vision loss and see that glaucoma is there. Remembering that a hallmark of acute angle closure glaucoma is an elevated intraocular pressure and this patient's IOP was 60, this seems to be the most likely cause of vision loss in this patient. As a review, here is the normal flow of aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is produced by the ciliary body. It flows through the pupil, reaches the anterior chamber angle, and exits the eye through Schlem's canal. The balance between fluid production and drainage determines the intraocular pressure. In acute angle closure glaucoma, the pupillary margin blocks the passage of aqueous from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber, balloons the iris forward, and results in the iris root occluding the trabecular meshwork and completely obstructing Schlem's canal and thus drainage of aqueous fluid from the anterior chamber. This results in the rapid increase in intraocular pressure found in acute angle closure glaucoma. In this picture, you can see some of the hallmark findings in acute angle closure glaucoma. As seen in the left eye, the conjunctival vessels are dilated, especially near the cornea. This is referred to as ciliary flush. Additionally, the cornea is slightly hazy and the pupil is in a mid-fixed position. Treatment for acute angle closure glaucoma includes multiple medications, 
aimed at blocking the production of aqueous humor, such as topical beta blockers, topical alpha agonists, and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Additional therapies like mannitol reduce the volume of aqueous humor, while pilocarpine facilitates the flow of aqueous humor. Case two is a 30-year-old female with a three-day history of blurry vision on the left. She endorsed pain with extraocular movements and states that colors appear washed out. On further questioning, she reports that one year ago she had an episode of hand numbness. So going back to our go-kart MTV, two diagnoses are associated with neurosymptoms. Those are optic neuritis and amaurosis fugax. This case, this case sounds most consistent with optic neuritis. Optic neuritis is an immune-mediated demyelination of the optic nerve. Vision loss usually occurs over days and peaks by one to two weeks. Classically, it presents as a central scotoma and patients complain of red desaturation where the color red appears washed out. There's pain with extraocular movements and it is highly associated with MS and is the presenting feature of MS in 15 to 20% of patients. Our next cause of acute vision loss is a central retinal artery occlusion. In this image of the fundoscopic exam, you can see a pale retina with the classic cherry red macula that is the hallmark of this diagnosis. Patients with a central retinal artery occlusion typically present with sudden onset painless vision loss. Causes include emboli, thrombosis, vasculitis, sickle cell disease, and trauma. This is an ophthalmologic emergency and the goal is to resolve the occlusion within 90 minutes. Therefore, in addition to immediate ophthalmology consultation, in the emergency department, you can attempt digital ocular massage, have the patient breathe into a paper bag to increase the PaCO2, administer IV acetazolamide and tenoptic drops. The patient may also require an anterior chamber paracentesis. In this image, we see the fundoscopic exam of a central retinal vein occlusion you can see what is referred to as the blood and thunder appearance. Patients with a CRVO typically present with painless vision loss. It is typically caused by thrombosis leading to ischemia. Patients can frequently have a past medical history that includes hypertension, vasculitis, or hypercoagulable disorders. This diagnosis also requires emergent ophthalmology consultation, but unfortunately, there are no specific ED treatments for these patients. Case three is a 50 year old male presenting with sudden floaters in the left eye with flashes of light in the periphery. He now reports decreased vision and has a visual acuity of 20 over 400. His past medical history is notable for poorly controlled type two diabetes. Looking again at our list, which of these diagnoses are associated with floaters? Retinal detachment and vitreous hemorrhage. On the left is an ultrasound image of a retinal detachment. A hallmark of this is that it doesn't cross past the optic nerve as it is tethered there. You can see this is the retinal detachment and here is the optic nerve. So the detachment does not come across the optic nerve. Whereas a lot of times with a vitreous detachment, this would come across all the way. On the right is a retinal tear, and this is much more difficult to diagnose on ultrasound. As you age, the vitreous contracts, and this can lead to a retinal tear and then retinal detachment. This requires ophthalmologic consultation if vision is preserved, the macula is still attached and repair is even more emergent. If the macula is off and the patient has poor vision with the retinal detachment, repair should be performed urgently. Case four is a 70 year old female presenting with a right-sided headache as well as transient vision loss. 
She reported that her vision was blurry, but has not resolved. She also has noted that lately she has a lot of pain to the right side of her face when she eats food. During your evaluation, you find that she has an elevated ESR. Of these diagnoses, those highlighted here are associated with a headache. The patient in this case has temporal arteritis. It is now more commonly referred to as giant cell arteritis. This is a vasculitis of large and medium sized vessels. It typically affects individuals over 50 years old and predominantly affects females. Failure to promptly diagnose and treat this condition may result in permanent vision loss. Treatment for uncomplicated temporal arteritis includes prednisone and low-dose aspirin. For patients with acute visual loss, however, they require admission with high-dose high IV steroids. I hope you enjoyed this brief review of the nine causes of monocular vision loss. Next time you see a patient with this chief complaint, use the go-kart MTV mnemonic to run through the causes and initiate the appropriate workup and treatment plans. Thank you.